Okay, again. Can you explain the inner workings of meditation? Like what's going on behind the scenes when we are noting our experiences and repeating mantras or resting our minds within an experience? Um, well, we can answer from a point of view of the theory of the Abhidhamma, but I don't think we have to go quite so far. It's, it's, it's uh, quite simply put, there's a moment in the mind where you decide about an object. So you, whether it's seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, or thinking, these are the six doors. So there's the process of experiencing uh, that uh, for, first there's the object then the mind wakes up to the fact that there's an object this all happens very quickly but uh, wakes up and it, it approaches the object and then it experiences the object and then it decides about the object well there, there's another part of recognizing it associating it with past uh, experiences but then there's that moment of decision where the mind makes a um, makes a decision about the object: is it good? Is it bad? Is it me? Is it mine? All of these things, and maybe not just one moment, but there is um, well, there, there is said to be that one moment per experience, uh, and it, it can have all sorts of factors in it. But an ordinary state will will, will usually have likes and dislikes. and we'll have identification as me and mine and so on. So, quite simply put, the noting is a replacement for that. It's, it's a decision that this is this. Right? Ordinary, our ordinary reaction is this is good, this is bad, this is me, this is mine. Um, never just this is this. So that reminding you know, is really the best word possible to describe what we do and I'm using it more and more these days to not instead of mindfulness or so on you know, the noting, acknowledging, all those words don't really encapsulate what we're doing. What we're doing is reminding ourselves. Reminding. So you bring the mind back to that uh, original experience. Know, this is this, which, which is can be described by the words object, objective. You know, that is objective. It's objectivity. It's the definition of objectivity, or maybe not the definition, but it's it's exactly objective, uh, and it's also the truth. It's it's the definition of observation. You see. When you do a science experiment, when back way back in high school, when I did those kind of things, you have all the observations. That's the key to a good experiment: is accurate observations. So this is an accurate observation. It be, it was really confusing to me when I first learned about Buddhism. To you know, when you walk, just walk. When you sit, just sit. So, you know, I was reading these sort of vague concepts. Not exactly. Not not exactly. Uh, the way we do it, but it was this general concept of when you walk, just walk. You know, and that's not quite how I explain it now, but but it's along the same ideas. And I was getting these ideas of what the heck does that mean? What good is it? You know, what what, what does it accomplish, and so on. It's the key to understanding. So the next thing that happens it occurs in that case is you start to see the experience as it is, instead of um, with a deluded mind. You see, you start to realize that our ordinary reactions, our ordinary uh, understanding of our experiences is fr are, are fraught with, with delusions and um, sort of a, a vagueness or a, a lack of clarity that allows for all sorts, of, a breeding ground of all sorts of defilements. My teacher would always describe it as darkness. You know, so he would he would often refer to mindfulness as a light that you shine in. You know, in dark, and it, it, it's a good analogy because in darkness, all sorts of bad things grow, right? In darkness, fungus grows, bacteria grows, and 
you know, if if there were no sun, or not sun, there's a, in places where there are no sun, like in dark caves and so on, um, it, it, that's where all of the sort of gross stuff grows. But as soon as the sun comes out, if, if you shine sun sunlight, the, the, this can't grow, the, the, it can't fester. And so that, I mean, that's a non-technical or sort of partially quasi-technical explanation of what happens. Um, I don't know if you want me to, if, if it's necessary to go any more technical than that. I mean, there's not much further you can go. Um, you know, there is some sense that you can have... Uh, you, you can have a system of sort of describing the building blocks, you know. I mean, so in, a, in, a, in, in, in one sense this question is asking for an atomic framework or, you know, subatomic, depending, you know, as you would. Um, and so the Abhidhamma tries to provide that. It's quite interesting to find this atomic framework uh, for the mind, and so you can actually study that and and see exactly what's going on, what the difference. But I think that's it's quite clear, it's quite simple, and as a result, it's it's uh, it's quite easy to f dispel a lot of these doubts that I used to have, and a lot of people I met used to have about uh, this type of practice. You know, what good? Is, what, what the heck does that do? This mantra of mindless brainwashing. You know, what what, what is that? when in fact it's quite simple and quite clear and, and quite obviously useful. I mean, maybe not obviously useful, but, but with a little bit of, you know, being honest with yourself. Another way of ex describing it is it's a changing of our habits. So over time, this changes the way we look at things in general. So our habit normally is reacting, responding, and... and, and you know, inexact, you know, cutting corners in a sense, rather than really examining, we fall into a, um, a habit based on what works. So it's worked for us so far, you know, and it's fine, you know, we're, we're able to get along, and that's how the mind works. Um, it, it's fine with imprecision and imperfection, um, because it works, it 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 fixed the problem uh, to some extent, and so we get used to this habit of of dealing with things in a way that that works. Meditation is, you know, the, this process of seeing things will will show you the imperfections in our approach to experience. Sometimes they're quite glaring, and we realize, Sheesh, how did I miss that? We realize that we're really doing things wrong. And most, for the most part, a beginner meditator will see some very fairly glaring errors of of uh, analysis or, or processing of experience, and so those will change. You know, you you naturally change your habits, and you'll start to um, react differently or respond differently. And so your habits will change. You'll start to have the habit of seeing things as they are, not reacting, being objective, being impartial, being equanimous, being clear, being balanced, being pure. I mean, there's so much incredible uh, benefits to the practice. Um, there's no question how wonderful it is. So that's what's happening, I think. Um, I mean, I th not I think, I think that's an explanation of, uh, you know, adequate explanation of what's happening. Thanks. Good question. <laughs>